The following program contains scenes of death. Ancient China, the land of leprechauns and unicorns. And I'm sure if you look around hard enough, you may find yourself the occasional Chinaman, or two, or three. And if you find one, catch him and make a wish. A country that's steeped in tradition, that has brought us so many great things, like Chinese food, iPhones, but also some not so great things that the World Health Organization fails to acknowledge. But I don't want to talk about that if you don't mind. And I ain't asking, because negatives aside, it is a country of dark mysteries. Case in point. Sinj Wei was the wife of a powerful lord named the Marcus of Dai. Her official title was Lady Dai. No relation, I can assure you. And I guess you could say that she was the ancient equivalent of Kim Kardashian. She wore designer gowns, had a rich and cool husband, attended top sporting events together, and they partied like it was 199 BC. And together, they shared many lovers. <laughs> Look at them, they got the brassesses out. Huh? It's funny, cause the guys got tits and they're cartoons. But either way, living the high life takes its toll. And all the money in the world won't save you from the reaper if your number gets picked. And the years of partying took their toll. And by the time that Lady Di was 50, there was a knock upon her door. Yeah, it was the Grim Reaper if you hadn't figured it. And she died of multiple illnesses. It was a sad time for all. Her husband, who was heartbroken, had a large funeral for her, burying her with all her wealth, including their servants who were still alive because they believed that the party would continue in the afterlife. And that was Lady Di's last days in the spotlight. Or was it? Because not everything in this world stays buried forever. <laughs> In this world, there are things that go beyond our understanding. Things that our tiny minds cannot possibly comprehend. Like when does reality end and dreams begin? Between the flick of a light switch and a dream, we continually shroud ourselves in a veil of illusion. Fast forward 2,000 years, and the only parties going on in China is the commie party. And no one's sitting around with their tits out anymore, because the good times are over. And while some workers, probably Chinamen workers, were digging up a hole under a hospital to build a bomb shelter, they came across an ancient burial site, and inside it, were riches beyond the imagination, along with some poor bastards who must have been the servants who were buried alive, their nail marks still on the wall, with food supplies to last a couple of hundred years. And also, you guessed it, and after 2,000 years without fresh air, she wasn't looking her best. She looked more like a bowl of macaroni and cheese, and with a serious case of hammer toe, can't touch that indeed. But regardless of what I think, and probably what you would think as well, unless you're fucking desperate, the Chinese eggheads disagreed. And when they started tearing her apart, they were amazed at how well preserved she was. Huh, I guess some guys prefer the gristle to prime beef. Lady Di appeared to have only an hour's worth of rot. No rigor mortis, blood still in her veins, and even had her last meal in her gut. I guess it was Chinese food. Is it just me or is these jokers getting a little too familiar with the lady? Hey buddy, keep your fingers above the equator. But either way, the remains of Lady Di is considered the biggest archaeological find of the 20th century. And the fact that the ancient Chinese have left all forms of body preservation literally in the dust, including modern techniques, it's a scientific breakthrough. Hey, I wonder if this fresh meat carried any viruses. But not everything in this world that is dead is prepared to stay dead. Case in point, meet the Pollock sisters, cute as two buttons. But as we know, 
Buns don't last forever, and neither would the Pollock sisters. It was on the way to church, on a fateful Sunday, that the twins were struck by a car driving erratically. The two sisters and a friend were killed almost instantly with their guts spread across the sidewalk. And when cops came knocking to give Mr. and Mrs. Pollock the tragic news, they were devastated. After all, no parent wants to outlive their children. After a period of mourning, Mrs. Pollock fell pregnant and she had twins. And it was a joyous occasion in the family home. Two beautiful angels to carry on the memory of their departed daughters. But early on, the parents realized that there was something peculiar with the twins. Although identical, they had separate birthmarks, which was rare. But even more bizarre, these birthmarks mirrored the scars on their dead sisters. They also had asked for their dead siblings' favorite dolls by name. Dolls that they had no prior knowledge of and that had been stored in the attic since their death. The pair were also terrified by roads and cars and would break down in tears at even the sound of a horn. And at playtime, they would reenact their sibling's death. In an effort to move on and put the grief behind him, the father threw out his dead daughter's toys and possessions. As the twins got older, it seemed that they were almost becoming their dead siblings, referencing memories that even the parents have forgotten about, often wanting to visit their graves and talk to them in full conversations. This disturbed the parents so much, they eventually had to seek professional help, and the country's top experts were enlisted to stop poking around. But all coming up with the same conclusion, that this was England's first documented case of reincarnation. And although to date there have been many cynics, not one of them has been able to come up with an explanation of how the Pollock sisters returned home. Almost every day of our lives, we are exposed to one form of brutality or another, and lives being cut short in the most horrific of fashion, where we can almost become immune to it. But there are some crimes that are just so evil that they stifle the imagination. Evil that must most certainly leave an imprint on the location and anyone unfortunate enough to be in its proximity. Case in point. Villisca, Iowa. Part of America's heartland. And I suppose you could say the sort of place that everybody knows everybody's business. That is, unless your business is murder. And in that case, nobody knows nobody's business that well. And no one knows why someone entered the Moore's family home just after midnight, killing six family members along with two guests. The well-known and well-liked family had been out at an event and had returned just after 9.30. The children had invited two friends to spend the night, so they had a late snack and went to bed. Police believed that someone was hiding in the attic. When everyone was asleep, they came out and set about their task. One by one. Starting in the parents' room and then moving down. It's believed that everyone had been sleeping and they didn't have a goddamn chance. The next day, when a concerned neighbor noticed that the family had not done their chores, she came by the house, and she was met by carnage. When cops came to poke around, they found two cigarette butts in the attic, and figured the killer had sat and waited for his victims. And they also figured the murders happened between midnight and 5 a.m. Six kids and two adults. It was a goddamn massacre. And it was the talk of the whole country, and people were horrified The young children could come to the brutal end at the end of an axe. And although the cops ran down a number of suspects, they were hard pressed to find anyone who would commit a crime of such brutality. But there was one name that kept coming up in conversations. A traveling preacher man selling God from the back of a pickup truck, known as being crazy as a shithouse rat, and with the reputation of beating the love of Jesus into people with the back end of an axe. But he had an alibi because he hardly knew the family, and he was as clean as a soul on a cripple's boot. And the murders remained unsolved, and the case went cold. Kids singing at night, ghost sightings. The owners couldn't give the house away. I guess no one wanted to build a life 
on death. Even the town became deserted, with long-established businesses pulling up roots. Nearby residents were virtually given their property away to get out of town, and the only visitors were thrill-seekers and ghost hunters. It was around this time that a clever entrepreneur took over the house and started charging people to stay the night so they could get their paranormal rocks off. It was on one fateful night that a ghost hunter named Robert Larson, along with his elderly parents, decided to visit and spend the night at the ghost house. At first, as Robert went room to room with his ghost hunting gadgets, he seemed pleased with the readings, and he believed that he'd filmed the floating orb that he figured was a spirit. But then all of a sudden the temperatures dropped, and almost instantly, it became freezing, and the batteries drained on his camera and other devices, and he decided to call it a night, needing to return to his room to charge the batteries for the next night's hunt. It was only an hour later, about 11.30 at night, that the curator of the house heard a scream. Like a bitch, my words, not his. And when he ran to the room where the scream came from, there, lying on the floor in his underwears, a knife stuck in his chest with blood spurting everywhere, was Robert Larson. When paramedics arrived, they said that Robert had stabbed himself with a large knife, and they rushed the man to hospital, where his life was saved. Since that faithful evening, 37-year-old Larson has curtailed his ghost hunting pursuits and refused to speak of the incident or the orb that he saw. He also refused to share why he was screaming like a bitch. Hey everybody, this is Deb Buck. If you enjoy what I do, think about signing up to Patreon, a subscription-based service that for as low as a buck a month, you get my exclusive content, you get podcasts, you get stuff that's been removed by YouTube, which is a lot of it. Early releases, access to my Discord, and so much more. And all that for one filthy dollar. I'll leave a link in the description.